Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today we are looking at the latest affordable 1440p 144Hz gaming monitor from ViewSonic, the VX2705 2KP MHD. This beast is the successor to ViewSonic's highly popular VX2758 2KP MHD, which we reviewed and loved right back at the start of 2020. With a price tag between $300 and $350 US dollars, the VX2758 kicked off a downward trend in 1440p IPS gaming monitor pricing and fierce competition in that space, so it'll be interesting to see how ViewSonic's new and updated version for 2021 fares. To complicate matters somewhat, the VX2705 2KP MHD is also known as the VX2768 2KP MHD in some regions. It appears here in Australia and some parts of Europe, we're getting the VX2705 model, while those in places like the United States will have access to the VX2768. Both models are virtually identical though, with the same model code and same specifications. So what has changed between ViewSonic's previous model and this new version? On the spec sheet, not that much. Both are 27 inch 1440p 144Hz gaming monitors that use an IPS panel. Both feature Adaptive Sync support listed as AMD FreeSync, although both also work with Nvidia GPUs through G Sync. Specs like contrast ratio and brightness are similar, as is the design. If you're just going on the spec sheet, the only noticeable change is a switch from one HDMI 2.0 and one HDMI 1.4 port to two HDMI 2.0 ports on the newer model. Hardly a groundbreaking upgrade, but as we'll discover in our performance testing shortly, there are some under the hood differences as well. As for pricing, ViewSonic has retained their aggressive pricing model that makes the VX2705 one of the most affordable 1440p 144Hz displays on the market. Here in Australia at PC Case Gear, the VX2705 2KP MHD is the cheapest 1440p 144Hz IPS display you can get, with a price below $400 and in the range of VA monitors. Over in the US, the similar VX2768 appears to be holding the same retail price as the VX2758 at around 300 US, or even a little under, which is a stellar price. The overall design ViewSonic are using for the VX2705 is similar to the VX2758, with some key differences. From the front, you're unlikely to spot the changes. This is the VX2758, and this is the VX2705. The stand assembly in particular appears identical, which unfortunately means we don't gain height adjustability. It's the same basic, cheap, tilt-only stand. That's a bit disappointing given other budget class displays are starting to include more ergonomic stands. However, on a closer inspection you'll start to notice the differences. The rear design has been updated to include a much more streamlined aesthetic, which in my opinion looks a lot better and less cheap. Features like VESA mounting are retained, and the port selection is similar, aside from one port being upgraded from HDMI 1.4 to 2.0. There's still built-in speakers as well. ViewSonic has also updated the position of the OSD controls, although unfortunately they did not move to a directional toggle which would have been ideal. So we still control the OSD through face buttons, but they're now in a much more accessible position on the bottom right edge. The actual OSD design itself is unchanged, and many of the features remain the same, and ViewSonic has an average feature set here that won't blow you away. Moving now into response time performance, the VX2705 has the same set of three overdrive modes as the VX2758 before it. However, performance is quite different, so let's take a look. The standard mode is the default mode and represents a state without overdrive. We're essentially looking at native panel performance, which is quite slow, certainly not fast enough for 144Hz gaming. However, there is no overshoot, which is a positive. The advanced mode is next up, and it doesn't present much of an improvement over the standard mode. Response times improved by about one millisecond on average, and there is still no overshoot to speak of, but this doesn't change the display's motion clarity in any significant way. It's still a blurry experience here, with quite a bit of ghosting as the panel simply isn't transitioning fast enough. Then we move to the third of three overdrive modes, and oh, well, that's not particularly great either. Here we are seeing a significant improvement to average response times, now up to a 6.3 millisecond average. However, overshoot has increased substantially to the point where over half of all transitions tested exhibited noticeable inverse ghosting. As a result, cumulative deviation, the measurement of how close a response gets to the ideal instant response, doesn't improve significantly from the advanced to ultra fast modes. So we're in a bit of a pickle here because ideally ViewSonic would be providing an overdrive mode between these two modes that offers a balance between response times and overshoot. Instead, we can have one or the other, 
fast response times but high overshoot, or slow response times with no overshoot. When looking at Blurbuster's UFO test, this is what the panel actually looks like when displaying motion. It's either blurry in the advanced mode, or with significant inverse ghosting trails in the ultra fast mode. After gaming on this panel for a little bit, I found the overshoot to be noticeable and annoying, so in my opinion the advanced mode is superior here. However, a monitor like the Pixio PX277 Prime does have a more balanced mode, offering around an 8 millisecond experience, which I feel is the better of the three options that we're looking at here. Advanced is also the better mode for adaptive sync gaming. When using the ultra fast mode, overshoot gets even worse at refresh rates lower than 144Hz. We can see here at 120Hz and 100Hz that overshoot quickly reaches 66% and cumulative deviation blows past 1300 which is poor. On the other hand, the advanced mode holds its performance throughout the refresh range and even gets slightly better at lower refresh rates like 60Hz. However, ultimately the panel is still quite slow at all refresh rates using this mode. As you might imagine, this does not bode well for the VX2705 when comparing this display to others. Response times are the worst among this section of mostly 1440p displays that I've tested using our updated methodology for 2021. Other budget displays like the AOC Q27G2S and Gigabyte M27Q pull ahead of the VX2705 at their respective maximum refresh rates, which incidentally are also a bit higher than what the ViewSonic offers. Even if we used the ultra fast mode here instead, the inverse ghosting rate would be more than double that of any other monitor in this chart, which once again highlights the lack of a middle ground overdrive setting. On average across the refresh range, the story doesn't get any better for the VX2705. This display is roughly twice as slow as the AOC Q27G2S, and around 6 milliseconds slower than something like the PX277 Prime on average. This is a poor result and shows how important getting overdrive settings right is for a monitor's performance. Where the VX2705 can claw back some ground is in average cumulative deviation. While still not a great result, the complete lack of overdrive helps the ViewSonic monitor regain some ground, only ending up around 20% behind the AOC Q27G2S, which is the next worst budget 1440p IPS monitor tested. Definitely not a result that will make you run out and buy this monitor, but better than what we've just been showing in terms of raw response times. The VX2705 2KP MHD is not a great display for fixed 120Hz gaming. You'll be better off with most other monitors. At 60Hz we get perhaps the best showing from the ViewSonic display yet, but again, it still sits at the bottom of the charts, making it quite a difficult sell. Now, you probably will be wondering, well, where is the VX2758 2KP MHD in these charts? For that we can go back to our legacy test data, which was captured using our 2020 and prior test methodology, as we no longer have a VX2758 to test with. Looking at average performance across the refresh range, this is still not a favourable result for the VX2705 in any way. This monitor has regressed from a 7 millisecond average response previously to nearly 10 milliseconds with the updated model, for just a small reduction in overshoot. The VX2758's advanced overdrive mode that we were using here is simply a lot better than the newer VX2705's implementation of the same mode. Slow response times also affect total input latency, as it takes longer for the panel itself to transition from one colour to the next. While the VX2705's processing delay is small, those after the most responsive experience for gaming should look to a different display. Power consumption on the other hand is pretty good, and presents results in line with other gaming monitors that we've tested. ViewSonic does offer a backlight strobing mode with this display, although it's not worth talking about in any significant detail, as once again response time performance is too slow to make it useful. There is significant strobe crosstalk and double imaging as a result, so I wouldn't use this mode at all. While response time performance is underwhelming to say the least, ViewSonic can claw back some dignity with colour performance. Like their previous iteration, the VX2705 does include a wide gamut panel, and in our testing produces about 94% DCI-P3 coverage, which is pretty good for such a cheap panel. If you need this sort of gamut for productivity work, then it could be a decent choice. ViewSonic also continues to provide above average factory grayscale calibration. My review unit had a slight blue tint out of the box, but otherwise adhered well to the sRGB gamma curve, leading to respectable delta E results. Unfortunately though, we do see oversaturation by default, as ViewSonic leaves the gamut unclamped out of the box. This leads to high delta E's, and an inaccurate experience in our saturation and colour checker tests. 
In what is a fail from ViewSonic, there is no functional sRGB emulation mode or gamut clamp available in the OSD settings, so there is no way to restrict this wide gamut display to showing just sRGB colors in the display's hardware. This means it will be impossible to get an accurate image in some applications that don't support ICC profiles, and therefore impossible to fix oversaturation for things like YouTube video playback which does not play nicely with ICC profiles. When developing a wide gamut monitor, sRGB emulation modes are a key inclusion and ViewSonic hasn't implemented one here. With that said, in applications that do support ICC profiles, you can get decent results out of the VX2705 2KP MHD. sRGB accuracy can be as strong as it supports the entire gamut, easily leading to sub 2.0 delta E's. P3 results are also very good. You're going to miss out on the very top end of the gamut as we don't quite get 100% coverage, but for most use cases this is sufficient and delta E averages are acceptable. One aspect of performance that has clearly improved from the VX2758 to the VX2705 is brightness. The newer model now achieves over 400 nits when calibrated, which is about a 25% increase to peak brightness. That may come in handy for those who use their monitor in a brightly lit environment, and it comes without any significant change to minimum brightness, which remains about 43 nits, a solid result. Another area that's unchanged is the contrast ratio. This is still a 1000 to 1 panel, so standard for a modern IPS, although much lower than today's VA panels. Given the VX2705 is also very slow in terms of response times, it may be worth considering a VA which will likely give you better response times and a higher contrast ratio. As for viewing angles, fairly typical IPS experience here, which is to say very good, and that's helped by the nature of the flat panel. My unit didn't have much IPS glow either, which is a positive, although this can vary significantly depending on the unit you end up with. Display uniformity was also pretty solid for the most part, not perfect, but decent enough in the central zone to be usable. The ViewSonic VX2705 2KP MHD is a bit of a weird one if I'm honest. It's one of those occasions where a company refreshes their lineup with a new product, but goes backwards in several key areas. With this particular display, response time performance simply isn't as good as the monitor it's replacing, in fact it's not even close. While I don't know for sure what happened during development, it appears as though ViewSonic have changed the hardware they are using. They're still using an Interlux panel, so it might be a newer revision of the same panel or perhaps a new scaler to facilitate the extra HDMI 2.0 port. These are fairly common component changes that may have been dictated by supply constraints or older parts being discontinued, nothing unusual there. They also may have wanted to have resolved some of the flickering complaints that plagued the VX2758. I didn't see any flickering with the VX2705, so that may also have dictated a hardware change, maybe a change in scaler for example. But in the process of updating this display, it seems ViewSonic simply forgot to optimize the overdrive settings for its new hardware. The end result is we don't have that nice, balanced response time mode we need for optimal performance. Instead, it's a choice between two bad options, and the limited selection of overdrive modes doesn't help. It also means the VX2705 is not competitive with other budget class 1440p 144Hz IPS gaming monitors. Many of the other options around this price range all perform substantially better in motion clarity, and several of them also pack better features. The AOC Q27G2S, for example, has a height adjustable stand. The Pixio PX277 Prime has a higher 165Hz maximum refresh rate. The Gigabyte M27Q includes a KVM switch. These three monitors are generally priced within $50 of the VX2705 and all simply perform better and end up better value offerings. The only areas where the VX2705 appears to be an improvement over its predecessor, the VX2758 2KP MHD, is in the design, which is nicer overall and peak brightness which is a bit higher based on the units I tested. The fact it retains features like decent factory calibration and uniformity is nice, but ultimately doesn't make up for downgraded motion clarity. So at the end of the day, while the VX2705 2KP MHD is a very affordable monitor and one of the cheapest with its specs, it's not something I can recommend. At a pinch, I could see the VX2705 being a competent second display for people that don't care much about motion clarity and just want a cheap monitor with great viewing angles, but outside of that, it's just not worth buying. Given the older VX2758 2KP MHD is still in stock in many regions, it's the monitor I would choose hands down, especially as its price tag is virtually the same. Otherwise, the alternatives from AOC, Pixio, and Gigabyte that I mentioned earlier are all worth exploring as well.
Anyway, that's it for this review of ViewSonic's terribly named VX2705 2KP MHD. I really wish that, as well as updating the monitor itself, that they updated the name to be a bit more simple, but it is what it is. Um, as always, if you're interested in supporting our monitor testing, you can do so via the links to Patreon and Floatplan in the description below. If you sign up, you'll gain access to things like our Discord community, the ICC profiles we generate during our monitor testing, and things like monthly live streams, behind the scenes videos. You all know the drill at this point. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.